and welcome to another edition of Kaleidoscope on Channels Television. Thanks a lot for joining us on the program. I'm Anne Wawadu. On Kaleidoscope today, we have a chat with the Managing Director of the Nigerian Ports Authority, Hadiza Bala Usman, discussing the value added to the country through ports operations, some corporate social responsibility initiatives, and her experience since our appointment as the NPA boss. Once again, welcome to the program. The Nigerian Ports Authority, the NPA, is a federal government agency that governs and operates the ports in Nigeria, with six major ports operations are carried out under the supervision of the Federal Ministry of Transportation, with some collaborations with other government agencies. But first, let's talk about how it all began. Port operations and development in Nigeria began in the middle of the 19th century. Efforts towards the provision of facilities for ocean-going vessels started with the opening of Lagos Lagoon in early 1909. The Apapa port in the southwest was earmarked for development in 1913 and construction of the first four deep water berths of 548.6 meters at the port began in 1921. The port of Port Harcourt was conceptualized on discovery of coal in Enugu state and was subsequently opened for business in 1913. The completion of the railway line in Enugu in 1916 resulted in the development of four 1,920 feet long berths at Port Harcourt to expedite the exploitation and exportation of coal on one hand and the support of importation of goods on the other hand. The Nigerian Ports Authority was established as a continuous public corporation by the Ports Act of 1954 to address the weakness that bordered on lack of proper policy framework as ports development were done on ad hoc basis driven by changes on the level and demand of seaborne trade. In 2003, the federal government of Nigeria initiated the drive towards improving efficiency at ports and the landlord model was adopted for all the Nigerian ports. This gave rise to the concession of 25 terminals to private terminal operators with lease agreements ranging from 10 to 25 years. One of the concessions was a build, operate and transfer arrangement. Also in the process of reorganizing the ports, the former eight ports were reduced to six major ports. The Lagos Ports Complex, Tinkan Island Ports Complex, Calabar Ports, Rivers Ports, Onair Ports Complex and Delta Ports Complex. In December 2003, in line with the reform program, the transaction commenced with the advertisement for expression of interest in the National Council on Privatization with the Bureau of Public Enterprises acting as the transaction agent. The Nigerian Ports Authority, one of the highest revenue earners for Nigeria after oil, offers various services including harbour services, cargo handling, marine services, health, safety and environment services, security services, commercial, engineering and technical services, lands and estate services and much more. Some of the initiatives of the NPA include aligning with the global discourse on reduction in the use of heavy hydrocarbons and increasing the use of liquefied natural gas in maritime transport to help reduce carbon dioxide emissions and pollution arising from international trade. The implementation of the International Maritime Organization Sulfur Regulations 2020 on marine fuel, the advancement of non-oil exports in Nigeria, the electronic truck call-up system to ease ports operations and clear Greek locks and many more developmental projects aimed at improving ports operations in the country. With a vision to be the leading port in Africa and a mission to deliver efficient port service in a safe, secure and customer-friendly environment, 
The Nigerian Ports Authority is aimed at adding its quota to the development of the country. Some will call her young, though she doesn't agree with this, but she's the first female managing director of the Nigerian Ports Authority, a woman very passionate about the welfare of other women, and of course she continues to encourage women to aim high and believe in themselves. I sat with Mrs. Hadiza Bala Usman on today's edition of Kaleidoscope. As a federal government agency, what uh, general principles guide your corporate social responsibility initiatives? We are uh, a port operations um, regulator. So our CSR projects um, prioritize corporate social responsibility for the host communities of our port locations. So that's our, our primary trust as it relates to corporate social responsibility. But we we'll also look to vulnerable groups, vulnerable societies, um, specific to um, areas where we feel need support um, from federal government. As I said, our CSR is geared towards that. And in also developing our CSR policy, um, we looked to see where interventions are required across the board. Um, so we did a needs assessment um, across our port locations to determine the type of CSR that the host communities would like. We also expanded that um, within the policy framework to recognize, as I mentioned, um, other areas, vulnerable societies, incidents of natural disaster, and um, all such um, vulnerable groups that would require um, our intervention. As a female CEO, is there a deliberate effort to ensure gender parity in these CSR projects that you do? Um, absolutely. Um, women indeed are considered a vulnerable group, so we look to see how we can support um, gender, promote uh, women within the societies. Um, women empowerment is one of the areas that we have looked at within our um, CSR policy. We also recognize that there's a need for youth empowerment as well. Um, so women, youth, um, looking at specific areas, sectors that we feel would need some support. We're looking at education, we're looking at um, primarily healthcare. So these are the areas that we feel are key, um, also linking it to gender, meaning the girl-child education, meaning um, empowering, providing skills for women, also providing skills and um, um, training to, to, to the younger generation to enable them diversify on the type of skills that will enable them have the required um, um, employ, um, required skills to, to, to become employable. Now, in terms of operations of Nigeria Ports Authority, what are you doing to improve the ease of doing business in Nigeria? Um, the, the ports are the gateway to the economy, so ease of doing business through the gateway of the economy is important and key. We have prioritized that, taking into consideration the executive orders that were deployed by the um, Vice President through the Presidential Council on Ease of Doing Business. We have recognized the need to expand on our port operations to look and encourage um, cargo owners to utilize other port locations besides the Lagos port because we have seen an attendant congestion within that corridor. So we recognize that and are providing various discounts to encourage vessels to call in the eastern ports. I'm sure you would have seen in the last week where um, a huge consignment of cocoa was exported from Calabar ports. These are the type of things that we do in providing reduced harbor dues for those vessels that are calling in those ports that are outside of the congested areas. And indeed, within the Lagos ports, that is the Tinkan and Apapa um, ports, we are working, um, um, we're working to ensure that we prioritize access for export. We also recognize the need to improve um, inflow and outflow of ports. Um, indeed, when you look at the port corridors, you have to recognize that intermodal transportation is very key. We must ensure that we utilize the inland waterways, we utilize the rail, and we utilize liquid bulk for evacuation of cargo. As you can see, um, the Nigerian Railway Corporation through the Ministry of Transportation is working very hard for the deployment of rail to connect Tinkan Island and a Papa port. So this would um, ensure there is easier way of, of um, getting cargo in and out of the port. We're also working closely with Nigerian inland water authorities to have cargo moved um, using the inland waters so that you can reduce um, the congestion within the port. We're also um, working with Nigerian customs and um, 
um, to see how we can improve and reduce the bottlenecks that are applicable within um, goods clearance for cargo that have come in and also for the export to see how we can um, streamline the processes to make it easier um, for consignees to import and export their cargo. This is also um, around the need to improve um, export within the country. We held an interactive session with the Nigerian Export Promotion Council and um, we are working with them to see what we will do um, with import operations to make it easier for the export of Nigerian products to be done efficiently, to be done um, in a manner that um, encourages um, exportation of, of products. So this is also recognizing that the um, Africa Continental Trade Agreement has um, come into force, so Nigeria needs to be um, up to its um, um, ability in, in taking on um, that provision and ensuring that we are not short change or we do not um, get as much benefit um, within the agreement um, as stipulated. Now youth and gender uh, are two issues Nigeria still contend with in terms of appointment. I mean you were appointed the first MD of Nigerian Ports Authority after 63 years, youngest also. What do you think aided your appointment? I'll say this is something you'd probably ask the President and the Minister of Transportation, but uh, it speaks to the issue of capacity and competence and having showcased your um, ability within um, any form of interaction that you have um, with, I'll say, um, senior government officials. Um, so what I keep speaking to um, appointments and is the fact that whatever task you're giving at that particular point, you, you need to do your best and you need to showcase you have the competence and capacity to take on challenges and I think this is what informed um, decisions around recommendations where an individual is perceived to be young but as I keep saying it is indeed within the Nigerian context that we recognize a 40 year old as a young person because when I was appointed the MD of Nigerian Ports I was 40 and that in, in, in the larger context is not recognized as young but for some reason in the Nigerian context we seem to feel it's young and um, what we um, giving an opportunity as somebody that is categorized as young um, it's important for you to um, to excel um, so that the confidence um, would also be given to other younger people. So every time a younger person is recognized and given an appointment, you need to know that um, your whatever you do within that um, uh, um, ability, within that particular work that you've been giving, um, would reflect on other younger people. So how hard you work, how you're able to deliver, will determine the opportunities that will begin to younger people coming behind you. So these are the things that um, impact on both young and women. And regarding gender, there's also the sense that um, certain positions of authority um, are reserved for men, <laughs> which is actually quite funny because um, a woman, as I always say, is factory fitted to, to multitask. We have that capacity to take on challenges. We're very um, good at um, taking on responsibilities and on the go, um, being able to think on our feet, being able to, um, to, to, to just get things done. I think that is a woman. So being um, given that opportunity, I think you should also know that excelling would mean another woman would be given the opportunity. <clears throat> so if you're not giving, uh, if you're not performing, um, the, the, the thought would be, why would we want to consider another woman? So you should know that um, the glass ceiling you're shattering has to um, be, 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 you're carrying every other woman behind you, so you must um, excel. And I would also add that being young makes you confident, gives you the ability to challenge status quo, gives you the energy that is required to do the work. There's a lot of heavy lifting that comes with, 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 with such responsibility, and when you're younger, <clears throat> you're mentally more agile, you're physically more active, so you're able to um, push through and do all the, uh, I'll say, extensive work that is needed both mentally and physically to enable you deliver on your mandate. So those are actually advantages. When you're younger, it is a plus and an advantage. And when you're a woman, it is an advantage because you're already um, very used to being able to take on um, 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 issues and, and take on leadership role even from within your family as a woman. So I, I believe that um, those advantages that we need to look inwards to find within ourselves um, when you're young or when you're female given such opportunities. When we return on the program we continue the discussion on the activities of the Nigerian Ports Authority and much more. Please stay with us. 
Welcome back. You're still watching Kaleidoscope on Channels Television. Gender balance is important in every organization. And well done to all those ensuring that is achieved. In the concluding part of our discussion, the NPA boss talks about how women can attain the best in their chosen fields and more. So I can only imagine the resistance that came with your appointment, so many challenges. How did you overcome it to earn the respect in the industry and even get another tenure? <laughs> I think it's hard work. Um, getting the appointment is one thing, but um, rolling up your sleeves and getting the work done is the other part. Um, you need to be on top of your game. You need to study and understand, more so when you're not from that particular sector. There's a sense that um, you wouldn't understand it, but as I always say, read up, um, work harder than all your colleagues, work uh, as hard um, as you can, um, immerse yourself in, in the literature around the sector, and just, uh, uh, um, just be on top of your work. Um, you would um, refuse to allow distractions. Um, such continued remarks about your gender, about your age, are just distractions. Ignore that and just keep your eye on the ball, focus on your targets, focus on your key performance indicators, and just keep on going. I think um, these are the things that um, when you um, raise up your head, you would see that, oh my God, I've been able to get all of these things done when at the beginning, people underestimated you, people felt you didn't have the capacity or competence or the knowledge. And I think knowledge is what you seek. Um, nobody has monopoly of knowledge. No one person would say he knows it all. But understanding the need to study and work extra hard um, to show the naysayers that um, you are capable and whatever it is that informed the reason for your appointment, you would not disappoint the people that recommended you. So I think um, my, what I've done in the last few years is what informed the reason why the president saw it fit to recommend me for a second term and also to um, ensure that women are able to, to, to take on um, such important leadership roles and they're able to deliver um, in, in, in the manner with the confidence that is required um, to get the job done and also to challenge status quo and to question why things had been going on in the way they had in the previous days and just to say no um, business as usual cannot go on in in part operations as they used to now what are the things that have instituted gender balance in terms of operation in the npa um, we have looked specifically to uh, on policies that support women in workplace and we have reviewed our condition of service to recognize um, what is needed for the woman um, to, to excel within Nigerian ports, i.e. giving the maximum um, requirement for the maternity leave, recognizing that you can take your annual leave and also take your maternity leave within the same one year. A lot of organizations don't do that, but with a woman in, at the helm of affairs, I, I, I took that decision to say that it's not, um, you need to be able to be giving all the um, support um, as a woman to remain in work. And what we see over the years is women start work and then um, right when they're starting a family, they tend to drop off and um, fall into the cracks and resign because of the challenges with childbearing within a workspace. Um, so we um, sought to provide that, the maximum um, maternity leave needed. Uh, we also amended some of our policies that were not gender sensitive, like where a, a woman that is not married, is not entitled to a maternity leave, which we all, I found ridiculous. Um, childbearing has nothing to do with your marital status, so you need to be giving your due when it comes to um, having a maternity leave, irrespective of your marital status. Um, I've also consciously tried to um, encourage the woman to, women to get into leadership roles. So um, when we have our general managers, um, we have quite a number of women that are um, general managers in key strategic positions. Um, within my tenure, we had the first general manager of marine and operations that's a woman in Nigerian ports. So um, these are um, things that um, I do to, to encourage um, women. And also, I always um, speak to my colleagues to um, understand the need to support the woman, even if it's unofficial. So when you speak to areas around a, a, a young lady has a baby that went for a vaccination, you as her immediate boss needs to be flexible to accommodate some of those needs to recognize that she probably wants to close early or she might come in a bit late. Um, these are the things that we all need to consciously do within our own space um, to ensure that women have the necessary encouragement to remain in employment. 
Now, what advice do you have for women who think they have to wait for opportunities or it has to fall in their hands before they make things happen for themselves? What advice do you have for that girl, that young girl listening right now, or that woman who wishes to attain that high level? Um, I always say hard work, hard work, dedication. Um, you, you don't know who's watching, you don't know who's observing. Any task that is given to do, you do it to the best of your ability. You have to showcase that um, ability to think outside the box, the ability to have initiative, um, to take an idea and, and run with it, um, to conclude um, on, on projects that are given to you. Um, I always speak to the fact that even if you are giving this space to sweep, sweep it very well because people are watching you and your recommendations for um, would arise from that work. So don't always say, oh, I don't want to do this until I'm giving the perfect job before I excel. There's no such perfect job. Any task that you're giving is that task where um, you'll be able to showcase yourself. So never, um, I'll say, undermine any um, assignment given to you. You never know um, what impression you'll be leaving, what impression you'll be giving. So always be efficient, have integrity, um, be professional, in your approach to work, um, just um, do that and it will come to you. So I, I'm a believer in the result of hard work. I think um, we should all abide by that and, 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 it, and you would get it. Now finally, what are the future plans you have for the Nigerian Ports Authority in terms of your operations to aid corporate social responsibility initiatives and helping societies around you? Yeah, for 2021, we have an expansive um, CSR project um, as usual. We're looking to um, prioritize empowerment for women and youth. We're also keen to provide the necessary support required within the um, healthcare. We have noted the challenge within um, COVID that arose um, arising from the pandemic. Um, we are currently renovating um, the Apapa General Hospital. We're providing a, a huge um, renovation work there, which should be completed um, in the next two months. And we would um, want you to come and have a look at it. We feel equipping long-term existing medical facility is key to improving the healthcare within an environment, so which informed the reason why we decided um, to do a full rehabilitation of Apapa General Hospital as Nigerian ports because Apapa is a host to our premier port and we feel that that is a way to give back and that is a way to recognize um, what it is that the gaps that exist within our healthcare value chain. Well, I say kudos to everyone championing the cause of gender balance and inclusion right here in Nigeria and of course around the world. Everyone, irrespective of gender, religion and ethnicity deserves a chance to fly. And on that note, we draw the curtains on this edition of Kaleidoscope and Channels Television. Don't forget, you can watch past editions of the program. Just go to youtube.com forward slash channels web, click on playlist, and you find various editions and past editions of Kaleidoscope. So please enjoy your week with it. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time. Please stay safe. I'm Anne Wawadu.